Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Cortez Paul. Kevin Carter is always here, co-hosts of the Baldwin Report podcast. So full. I know Kevin did a wonderful job. He put some steaks on the grill and on a grill. <laughs> on a grill. We went and got a grill. Steak and potatoes and uh, his wife and son had broccoli, which <laughs> me and Kevin and I were really too keen on. She was kind of mad because you eat every other vegetable with that. Like, unfortunately, I don't like broccoli. He eats so. kale. <laughs> Yes, I can eat kale, I can eat spinach, bell peppers. I mean, I can eat a lot of vegetables, but I'm just not really big on broccoli. Yeah. So I, I felt bad because she bought a whole bag, and I walked into the kitchen. I'm like, Kevin, who's that broccoli for? He was like, I don't know. I don't eat it. <laughs> and I you went, like, neither do I. I like, I don't eat it. She's like, ooh, she bought a whole bag for it. Telling that you, her, and Austin would eat it. I'm like, I'm not eating it. Uh, I guess she's on alone. You went one myself. Well, 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 well. <laughs> but nonetheless, dinner was good. Oh, you said you were going to see the Avengers with me. Uh, we're we're going to go and do this. It's a 27-hour marathon uh, you... of all the Marvel movies from the beginning, from Iron Man all the way until Avengers 2. Yeah, I work forty yeah, hours a yeah, week. Yeah, we're not doing it. <laughs> we're not doing it. We're gonna be we're gonna be good. We, me and Cortez talked about this yesterday. We figured it out. The NFL draft is the 31st. Uh, the first round is on April 31st. The Avengers, the new Avengers movie, starts the 1st. But technically, it starts that day at 7 o'clock. Is the first showings of Avengers. So me and Cortez have already figured out what we're going to do. We're going to the draft day party for at, at the stadium. We're going to we're going to watch the draft. We're not staying until Cortez's team pick because it's way too long. <laughs> and so we'll stay to number three and then we'll take off and go and see the movie. Makes sense. So we, we already got that play. And then the next morning or no, Friday they'll go to work. So then Saturday morning me, Crystal and Austin will wake back up and we'll go see it again. <laughs> Unless you want to go with us after the after the draft party, but I don't know what time they're going to be playing, and I don't know if Austin is going to be. You have to take into consideration. But Cortez already agreed to go with me on opening night. I did agree. Which I didn't do the last Avenger movie, even though I was told that I did. I didn't do it the last Avenger movie, which killed me. I didn't get to go see it. I was like, I want to go. I want to go now. I want to go now. So I made Crystal get up first thing Friday morning. <laughs> Actually, we went up first thing Saturday morning and got up, and I was like, come on, we're going. It was like 10 o'clock in the morning, but we only paid $5 a piece. No, we watched it on IMAX, so we actually paid a little, it was $5 plus, I think, three more. Mm -hmm. So I think we paid $8 to see it in 3D. So as you see, Kevin is really, really We've already, together. Oh, we this movie, plan. if y'all haven't watched the trailer or any, you watch the trailer for the, the new trailer for the new Avengers movie because it's gonna be if you're into that stuff it yeah he's by very, far nuts he's oh very, I'm excited he's excited because you got the football draft his team is driving mm -hmm. third and and the Avengers coming out so Kevin is well really, I'm not happy that they're drafting third I know you're not happy, but no they're not. drafting third which means I don't have to watch a lot of it and hopefully Kevin can kind of figure out where the direction the team would go as far as free agency but you know that would come we'll up figured out Sunday yeah we'll discuss or that Saturday up here so. Anyway, let's cover some news because out of the blue, there was a trade that happened or that is an agreement. And LaShawn McCoy was traded to the Bills and the Eagles in return will, will receive Kiko Alonso. Sources that relate to everyone that McCoy is not pleased. No, he's not happy. <laughs> the words frustrated and not going to make it easy, that's for sure, has come out of the camp that he's representing or himself. McCoy... Pretty much since he was driving the Eagles in 2009, has nearly 7,000 rushing yards, 44 touchdowns, which is third third most since he actually joined the Eagles, and then fourth most for the 44 touchdowns since he joined the Eagles. C.J. Spielers also That's informed, in team history. That's in, yeah. That's in team history. Crazy, right? <laughs> C.J. Spiller and Kevin was telling me this, that he actually saw the interview that he was related to the news on NFL Network. And he goes, maybe we'll just flip-flop. <laughs> So, he goes, tell Philly to call me. That uh, was that was his exact words. Yeah, so I mean, I, Kevin, what, what's your thoughts on this trade? Because I mean, right, you was actually assuming the grill that you you have bought, and I'm gonna help you out here. But what was you what was your thoughts about this initially? It, it, when it, I when when you told me, I was like, no shit. That was my first thing. I was like, 
Really? And then I seen that they traded for a linebacker. And I was like, of all things, you traded for a linebacker. Yes, he was good before his injury, but he, he got injured now. He's going to be coming off of ACL tear where he missed the whole season. But he's a good young guy. He played for Oregon. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Connection. But it's it's – I still find it weird that you gave away your best player for a linebacker who still probably – McCoy probably has three or four good years left in him. Mm-hmm. I've seen all the crazy Eagle fans. Some of them some of them are going, this is a bad nightmare. I want to wake up from it. Other ones are, are going, oh, that's a great trade. We did a good job getting rid of him, which I said – I've said it before. I said I thought that he would be part of a trade if they wanted to move up and get Mariota. Not a part of a trade just to go and get a linebacker mm-hmm. to come in. He would have been he would have been a key centerpiece if they wanted to move up into draft because now you really have nothing to offer anyone. Plus, I think a big thing that they're doing is they're trying to make room. They're trying to make cat room because they want to go after Maxwell, uh, McCordy. They want to go after. Uh, they want to try to sign Jeremy Macklin back, which is a key now that you got rid of McCoy. You need to try to sign. Jeremy Macklin back, or your lead receiver is going to be Riley Cooper. Who would have thought two years ago that Riley Cooper would still be on this team? Deshaun Jackson, LaShawn McCoy, gone. Riley Cooper still on the team. Who would have ever thought after all that craziness with Riley Cooper that he would still be on the team and the other guys are gone? It's crazy. And now Chip Kelly is bringing in all of these Oregon players. He's got 11 on the team now. Last guy that brought in all of his college players... On a football team, when he went pro, didn't really fare too well. Mm -hmm. Just ask Steve how it worked now when he brought in all these Gator players thinking that when he was going to be, it it, it, it doesn't going to work out well. It didn't work out well then, but who knows how it's going to work out now. I think think Chip Kelly just has, Chip Kelly has a bigger, bigger head than anybody that plays for him to where he thinks that his system is going to run and it's going to run smoothly. He don't care who's who's playing in it. Right. Yeah, my thoughts when I read it, at first I thought it was a bad rumor. Because, I mean, I knew he was in talks to be in trader. He was I thought it was one of them fake accounts. Yeah, that's what I was like. I, was like, I, I thought I was being trolled. But it's, I knew was there was an option out there that he was going to be moved. But I thought. Oh, we like, thought he it, was going to be moved for the Mariota trade. Yeah, I thought he was going to be moved for a pick because, you know, running back shelf life for about 10 years. Give or take, how they do. On well, they say it's like up that. to thirty. Yeah. So and when they turn thirty, they they kind of start going downhill. Yeah. So I wasn't really stunned about him being traded. I was just stunned to where when they was traded going. him for. What exactly. they traded for yeah. and where he was going. So um, next question I want to ask: Could Philadelphia gotten more from McCoy? I mean, because there was rumors out there, like you said, that even your team that you they could have used him as a centerpiece to move up if they wanted to get Mariota. That's the big thing that I'm taking away from it. You could have used him as your centerpiece along with your picks to move up in the draft and get the guy that you really are wanting. But they could have got more just based on that alone. They could have done what they really wanted to do. Now it's going to be tough for them to be able to move up into the draft and get Mariota, especially with some of the other teams that are going to be looking for it. Because right now all they got is a number 20 pick to offer. Yeah. And – and next year's first rounder, and then this year's second rounder, and it's going to take a lot more than that to move up into the draft to where you're going to be in position to be able to snag him. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I, I, Alonzo's a good pickup because he did let – he ranked third in the NFL the year before 2013, mm-hmm. defensive rookie of the year. So he's a nice talent, but it just made me wonder with the ACL injury that he had missing the whole season, you go ahead and actually put a gamble to get this guy for, for a good – Poor, poor, wonderful football player McCoy. That probably that you probably could have got multiple yeah, assets. You, you with took him. arguably your best player and gave him up for a linebacker. For one linebacker, a, I mean, a linebacker, and you didn't even get a pick. Right, you got a linebacker. Just a straight up player trade. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I knew McCoy. In my opinion, I mean, at least that's what I'm thinking. He's worth more than Alonzo. To me, he still has three or four good, good years. I know where, but. And I, I I just think the dynamic of Chip Kelly thinking that he can do it with whoever mm-hmm. is what's coming into play here. And McCoy didn't like that. And when they butt heads, they never get rid of the coach. They'll get rid of the player before they get rid of the coach. Yep, I agree. So, 
Now, McCoy Cummins that I mentioned earlier, this is just a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah, he had every right to be pissed. <laughs> and he can say what he wants to say. Of course he's going to be frustrated. I'd be frustrated with him, too, if they got rid of me for it. Just right out of the blue. But they, they've they been butting heads. Yeah. They've been butting heads for a while. And he loves Philly. He loves the people of Philly. He likes the organization. But I think when Chip Kelly got there and them starting to butt heads, I think that's where it, it started to split. Well, this last is year. new to McCoy because he's been in Pennsylvania all his life where he played football at high school, college. He was fortunate to be drafted by the Eagles. He stood in Pennsylvania. Yeah, but you got to, and, and you got to think. He, last year, a lot of stuff went to the way of Darren Sproles coming into that offense. A lot of things started swaying over to Darren Sproles to where they used Darren Sproles in situations more than they would use McCoy. And I think that kind of got to him and everything, and I, I think that's kind of where they started butting heads. And I, I think, I think that's where they finally throwed off. I'll tell you what, I mean, he, he's in – with the Bills, I know it's going to be new form. He's got a pretty solid coach in, in Rex Ryan that he's going to. Well, in the Bills, he got he went to a team that's going to run first, play defense. Mm-hmm. That's going to be – that's how Rex did it in New York right. when he had a very good running game and a good offensive line and a good defense. Mm-hmm. That's what he's going to do in Buffalo. They went out and got Matt Castle and they got E.J. Mm-hmm. Manuel, both of them who you're not afraid of. Yeah. But you'll be afraid of the guy in the backfield. Right. So now you've got that guy that you'll be able just to hand the ball off. Yeah, because the defense was pretty darn solid. Well, last it was year. number one in the league. Yeah, it was solid. So, so you 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 got you your eight. You got the perfect Rex Ryan team right now. Mm-hmm. Running game, defense, and that's how they, that's how Rex likes to play. Right. So I mean, even with them, which pick- still kills me, why he didn't use T-Bone in New York if that's the way he liked to play running game, and <laughs> it, it, it was weird. Yeah. Instead, you use Mark Sanchez. <laughs> so, like we said, don't be surprised if Mark Sanchez goes. They got they got Castle as well, which was a pretty much a low bargain. They traded a draft pick. Mm-hmm. I mean, cheap. Why not? And undisclosed, which means they gave away like a fifth, yeah, fifth or sixth, something like that. So, what's your, what's your thoughts of their chance on the playoffs? I mean, I know it's always this, this is too early for landscape to tell, but with McCoy on Buffalo's chances mm-hmm. in that division. Uh, it all depends on what happens Saturday. I don't know. If, ask me again on Saturday. When you know. What or or ask me again on. next week when everybody officially signs. And we'll start looking at who can be able to do what and everything like that. But it's it's way too early to tell because you don't know what people around him are going to be, be doing. Yeah, I thought NFC was that division is always from one to slot eight. All those teams are very competitive. AFC... I mean, last few years, you have to worry about pretty much was just Denver and New England. But they have New England in their division. New England's in their division. <laughs> so, I mean, anything's possible with them probably getting a wild card spot. Depends what's going on. And like I said, Miami's making moves. They're, they're, they're supposed to be rumors about them with Sue, with, which the Jacksonville Jaguars are tied to Sue as well. So, I mean, this this is a, probably a better question to ask when everything's in the landscape. Nice flowers, by the way. I know. But um, I, like, I like their chances. You get you get a running back that is pretty much solid in your team, McCoy. So I, I like their chances with Rex Ryan. We know he can coach. He's a good motivator. He just likes staying. I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm still confused why he went to the Bills anyways because he still is in that ring of behind Belichick. <laughs> but I guess he just like playing against Belichick. But with 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 Rex Ryan McCoy, they, they got a good shot to kind of. To make the playoffs, but I'm, I'm gonna just hold off a little bit more until, like Kevin said, the moves are made. So, on the other side, man, what what is Philadelphia doing, man? I mean, Philadelphia is doing what Chip Kelly wants to do. That's the bad part about when you get a head coach. Kind of-